Hey guys, welcome back to day 700 of quarantine. My wife gave me a haircut because I haven't left the house in five months, so please don't say anything mean about it or you'll hurt both of our feelings. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have been keeping up with the news, uh, but apparently a lot of stuff has happened this year. Some of it's good, no, who am I kidding? It's all bad. Some of it, though, is just surprising. Today's video is a story of disappointment, of betrayal. Someone who, for decades, has been seen as a beacon of light within the Hollywood community. Someone whose show was all about positivity and good deeds. Someone whose name literally has the word generous in it. Turns out it's all a lie. I'm being a little facetious because even before the recent allegations of misconduct behind the scenes of her show, uh, Ellen has made some questionable decisions on her show. Somehow her whole shtick of positivity and everybody having a good time doesn't work quite as well when it's at the expense of someone else. She has this segment where she gives a bunch of old objects to a young person and they have to figure out how to use it while everyone laughs in their face. Scott Kramer made a really good video about this, which I recommend you watch after this one, uh, but I realized while searching for his video that this isn't just a one-time thing. This is like a recurring segment on her show. Even as recently as a month ago, apparently. I was really confused for a second because I was like, wait, are they still filming this show? But then I saw the date on the comically large check she wrote and it says March 10th, which is like right when shit was starting to hit the fan. That's why Ellen makes sure to keep her distance while the entire audience of peasants stays jam-packed next to each other. What is this, some kind of metaphor? Anyway, the way the game works is that you have 60 seconds to figure out how to use these things. I am gonna put 60 seconds on the clock. Okay. You know what a clock is? Yes. No, Ellen, I haven't seen a clock before. I was born tomorrow. I haven't been born yet. But of course, the teenagers don't know how to do these things because they've never had to before. So the audience laughs and laughs while Ellen looks on with contempt. Foolish child, never opened a can before, never had to set an alarm on an actual alarm clock, you dim-witted toddler. Okay. This whole thing just feels like one big retaliation to the OK Boomer meme. Oh, you millennials think you're so smart just because you know how to restart a computer. Well, try folding a map. Now we all feel better about ourselves. What a stupid idea this was, huh? Also, like, of course, she doesn't know how to use these objects that have become obsolete due to better technology. I'd like to see someone give Ellen two sticks and ask her to start a fire. Oh, what's wrong, Ellen? Can't do it. Never lived in a cave before? You're so spoiled. My great, 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 great. You know what I realize this is? This segment feels like if Facebook was a show. Oh, uh, well, everyone, would you look at this? We've got ourselves a millennial. Boo. Boo. You suck. How does it feel to have zero life skills? Shouldn't you have taught them to me? You're my dad. Get a job, child. I have a job using it to pay off my student loans. When I was your age, I had already bought my first house. It was $12 and I worked my ass off for it. No handouts, loser. I'm not asking for one. I just don't know how to use a rotary phone. I'm not sure exactly when it happened, but these days Ellen feels more like an angry curmudgeon than the lovable goofball she used to be. You've probably heard about that one episode where she had a hidden camera film a bunch of people who were told they could get one free gift, but when one of them took an extra gift for her sister, Ellen made sure to call her out on her show and eviscerate her in front of the entire audience. Oh, Nancy. You're the kind of person like when you go trick-or-treating and nobody's home you don't just take the you take the bowl you just walk away <laughs> no you go sit in that Ellen jail over there right now she also had this segment last year where she roasted a bunch of gifts including a painting that a fan made for her this was a gift that I got from one of my viewers this was sent to me from JB that's all I know it's very mysterious JB and here it is uh-huh yeah um, that's what I said when I saw it Oh. Imagine someone liked you so much that they hand painted a drawing for you and you were just like, yo, this sucks. You suck, dude. Hey, everyone, look how bad this is. This moron poured their heart into this because they admire me so much. What a loser. And I mean, yeah, it's not the best artwork. I've gotten fan art before that isn't like a masterpiece, but what am I gonna do? Go on my television show and make fun of them for it? No, I'm gonna keep it to myself. One time she had a young Chinese boy on the show uh, who had a translator with him. She kept getting really annoyed at the translator for not translating fast enough. You play the ukulele and then now you're playing uh, guitar, electric guitar, right? Yes. Yeah. 
What else do you want to learn? Uh, just one question, just what else does he want? <laughs> I don't know what you're telling him, but just ask him what I'm saying. Okay, sorry. Never mind. Okay. She's also had a habit of making her celebrity guests feel visibly uncomfortable during the interviews. And you're just naked with your friend? Why are you putting me on the spot like this? Gosh. Let's talk about your love life, can we? Oh, my God. Do you mind? Oh, God. I do. I don't know, man. Sometimes persistently asking them questions, even when they've made it clear they want to move on. Well, it seems like you're busy with something because you're forgetting to cut your son's hair. Um... <laughs> This yeah, is, right. look at him, he is beautiful, but look at his hair. When are you gonna cut that hair? Do you have a problem with that? No, I don't have a problem. That is some long hair. Boy have long hair? That's not right. Boy have short hair, girl have long hair. Oh wait. You turned 30. I did. And um, how was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. No, that can't be right. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. Can you please just tell everyone that I wasn't invited so I don't seem like the bad guy here? Thanks. No, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of shit about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who doesn't want to be in invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. Tell everyone I like you. Please. She really likes putting people on the spot. She kind of treats everyone who comes on her show as tools for entertainment rather than real people. And it just seems hypocritical coming from her because her show's mantra is literally be kind. Now, one of the worst things I've ever seen on the show was about 10 years ago with Mariah Carey, who she basically bullied into admitting that she was pregnant by coercing her into drinking champagne. People are saying that uh, that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. Um, <laughs> That's not champagne because you can't. No, it is. Her. Is it really? Yeah, you want to you want to taste it? I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. What? No, are I, you trying? I'm to not going to ask you if you're pregnant. This or not. is I'm peer just pressure. Say. You see what Ellen is doing? This is peer pressure. She clearly was not ready to announce it. Had no intention of announcing it, but Ellen just kept backing her into a corner because it makes for good TV. She wanted to be involved in breaking this story. So then, fast forward one week and Mariah Carey had to announce that she had a miscarriage. Now, I'm not saying that Ellen caused that. That would be ridiculous. Uh, but what she did do is force the situation into the public. Like, that's a traumatic enough thing to have to go through on your own, but now you have to admit publicly that you're no longer pregnant because a week ago your friend made you spill the beans on her talk show and now everything is in the spotlight when you could have just dealt with this uh, privately. And something about it just kind of feels gross to me. Like, well, you don't want to tell anyone that, but I'm Ellen, so you're going to tell me, right? So that brings us to today where there's no longer a dozen or so uncomfortable moments over the years. There's now potentially hundreds of accusations of misconduct either by Ellen herself or by a producer on her show. Now, legal disclaimer, uh, I don't know if all of these things are true. Maybe some of them are not. They're all just hearsay as of now and therefore have not been substantiated in a court of law. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm not making any of these claims myself. I'm just reading what other people said about her on the internet. So that should cover my ass, I think. All right, let's read it. She has a sensitive nose. So everyone must chew gum from a bowl outside her office before talking to her and she thinks you smell that day, then you have to go home and shower. This is a big one. You're not allowed to look at her uh, at all. If you make eye contact with her, even on accident, then she will reprimand you and the entire crew as a group. When she's in a bad mood, staff members were highly encouraged by upper management to go to her office and do bits to cheer her up. She doesn't like a monologue someone writes for her. She throws it on the floor. Every day she picks someone different to really hate. It's not your fault, just suck it up for the day and she'll be mean to someone else the next day. Former producer claims Ellen laughed when staff were yelled at. This person almost got fired from their service job because she wrote a letter to the owner and complained about her chipped nail polish. Her former DJ, who was on the show, recently posted and didn't go into details, but said he can confirm that he was a part of the toxicity in the workplace. Now, some of that is just sort of your classic diva behavior that doesn't necessarily make someone a monster, you know? A lot of it really comes down to the environment of the workplace as a whole and some of the things that some of her producers did. One person said they were fired after having to take 
medical leave for a car accident and having to take a couple days off to attend a family member's funeral. Someone else said something similar, that when they came back from medical leave, their position was just eliminated. One person made a GoFundMe to cover medical bills that weren't covered by their health insurance they got through the company. And because the show didn't like how that made Ellen look, they demanded that she take it down after less than 24 hours. A black woman who worked there was told by a senior level producer, oh wow, you both have box braids. I hope we don't get you confused. And then at a work party, one of the main writers told her, I'm sorry, I only know the names of the white people who work here. Dozens of former employees say one executive producer had a reputation for being handsy with women and that another solicited oral sex at a work party. Jesus Christ. Overall, the theme is that like, if you're working for the Ellen show, you should just feel lucky that you get to do that and not worry about all the shit being thrown your way. Seems like they really pit everyone against each other and picked favorites. They would reward the people who never complained, working long shifts without ever saying anything about it. And in doing so, that kind of silences the people who do want to speak up. Overall, it just seems like a really shitty environment. And even though a lot of this doesn't directly have to do with Ellen doing something, I feel like there's almost no way she didn't know this was happening. How can you have all these people who work for you, certainly rumors are gonna come flying back your way. And it would, seems like it was never really enough of an issue until it became this big story. And now they're under investigation, but what about the last 15 years while all this stuff was happening? I think the most disappointing thing about this for me is just when you find out that someone with a position of power is taking advantage of that power and doesn't give a shit about their employees, that sucks. When someone's going through their own medical problems, it's just like, ah, well, they're not a very good employee anymore because they're off dealing with that. Let's just replace them and move on. Now, does a lot of this stuff happen in other industries too? Absolutely. Uh, people are very cutthroat when it comes to their businesses. This isn't new. But I guess I was just hoping that Ellen DeGeneres might foster a better work environment than Jeff Bezos. It just is not a very high bar to cross. But don't worry, everyone, the celebs have started to come to her defense. There may be dozens of accusations of mistreatment, but Ashton Kutcher says that she was always nice to him. So it's like, who do I believe? There were apparently well-paid executive producers who were notorious for their sexual misconduct, but Jay Leno is friends with Ellen. So it's like, I guess everyone's just lying? There's something so ironic about celebrities coming to her defense when the accusations were never about them in the first place. No one was accusing Ellen of being mean to Ashton Kutcher. That's not the point. And I understand that if your friend gets accused of something bad, your instinct would probably be to come out and defend them because you've never experienced that yourself. But your positive experience with someone doesn't change a negative experience that someone else might have had with them. This guy's joking me. I'll call for help. I, wait, Brian? Kevin? It's so good to see you, man. Same, dude, it's been forever. What's happening? How have you been? So good. I sell blood on Facebook Marketplace. No way. I was gonna do that. Can you help me? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and you are? Being choked right now. Oh, by whom? By your friend, Brian. Really? Brian, is this true? No. That's what I thought. Plus, Brian's never choked me before. How does that change my experience? I don't know. Brian's a good guy. I don't think he would do something like that. He's doing it right now. But I don't think he would. Just because someone's your friend doesn't mean they're a good person. What did he say? I don't know, he was kind of mumbling. So weird. And then he just falls asleep. Uh, what is it, bedtime? Yeah, it's like, uh, good night. <laughs> what a weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can you get out of my house? Now, it's worth noting that not every celebrity came to her defense. Some of them seemed quite eager to do the opposite, actually. Howard Stern came out and said she should just embrace it. Be a jerk, be a punk. Wait, what does that mean? P word. Oh, it's prick. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. I guess it's because they use the word bitch just fine, but prick is where they draw the line. But Howard actually has a pretty good point here. I mean, obviously I don't think any of the things that she's accused of are validated. Shitty behavior is shitty behavior, but what rubs a lot of people the wrong way is the hypocrisy of it. When you project this image onto the world of being kind and loving and charitable, but it turns out to all be a facade to make yourself look better, when in actuality you're kind of a monster behind the scenes, that's worse than just unapologetic apologetically being an asshole. You reel people in with this fake persona and get them to fall in love with you, but 
You've actually been lying to their face this entire time. I guess it shouldn't be surprising to find out that a rich Hollywood celebrity is not as nice as they seem. If I had a dollar for every time that happened, then I could be a rich Hollywood celebrity. I think what's so disheartening about it is that it's Ellen. I know that the red flags have been there for a long time. I know for a lot of people, the niceness always seemed kind of fake, but I was hoping she would be the exception. This is Dory we're talking about here. She was a childhood hero of mine. So many people have looked up to her over the years. She's made history and this feels like finding out Mickey Mouse is actually a giant pervert. So now the show is apparently under internal investigation, so who knows what will happen next. She did come out and apologize. Uh, but all she really said was like, damn, that's crazy. I had no idea all that stuff was going on. Well, I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. The total lack of accountability kind of reminds me of that thing that happens a lot now where a senator will tweet like, someone's got to do something about this. And it's like, yeah, you do. <laughs> that's your job. Like, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but my YouTube videos have really gone downhill lately. Hopefully someone does something about that. Word on the street is that Ellen will probably have to be replaced, which is a shame because her show in quarantine has been so entertaining so far. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not, all not a corner, soft. Not a corner, a callus in sight. No. But the good news is that means that the door is open for someone else. And this guy Gabe on Twitter had a really good idea. Get Eric Andre to replace Ellen. Keep show format the same. Also, don't change the name. <laughs> and then that was followed by a petition that Eric Andre himself retweeted to make Eric Ellen, along with some beautifully photoshopped pictures. And I gotta say, as bad as this year has been in every conceivable way, this is the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Also, I signed the petition. So to sum everything up, Ellen is mean, Eric is Ellen, and I have to go to the bathroom. So let's cut to commercials. Hi, do you like to do stuff? Well, you can't because nothing is happening. If you're like me, you ran out of stuff to watch on Netflix like three months ago, and that's why you're watching this YouTube video right now. Well, what if I told you you didn't have to watch this video, that there's a whole world of content out there just waiting to be unlocked, and you have access to it with just one simple trick. With ExpressVPN, you can change the virtual location of your device to one of 94 different countries, and in doing so, you unlock whatever shows and movies may only be available there. In the US, that means shows on Netflix like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Rick and Morty. I've even used it to watch basketball games that were blacked out in my area. But ExpressVPN also helps protect your personal information. By connecting to the internet via a virtual private network, you ensure that 100% of the data that is shared between your device and the World Wide Web is encrypted. It also provides an extra layer of protection to prevent certain organizations from tracking your Google searches and doing whatever they want with that information. ExpressVPN has consistently faster speeds than their competition, and they're also the number one rated VPN provider by CNET, TechRadar, and a bunch of other websites that know more about this stuff than I do. To find out how you can get three months free, Click the link in the description, that's expressvpn.com slash Drew. Now you can finally watch The Pickle Show. Funniest shit I've ever seen. So glad I installed that toilet in my office. Well, guy, thank you so much for watching. If you didn't like today's video, don't worry. I'm sure someone out there will be able to make sure that my videos start getting better. I wish you all happiness and good health, uh, unless you're like a regular person, then I don't really care what happens to you. But please make sure to come back next week for a very fun video where I realize I was accidentally looking the wrong way the entire time. Bye.